Hi, in this video, we're going to be going over the topic of different stages of protein complexity. So there are four main stages of protein complexity, namely primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. And as we go down the list, the complexity of the structure is going to get higher. So I'm just going to briefly define each of these and the characteristics that are involved. But before I do that, I want to emphasize a common theme in biology that will help us to kind of figure out how you know, you know these structures function. So the theme that I'm going to mention is that structure dictates function. I want you to remember that. So structure or shape, however you want to call it, is going to dictate the function. And this, and this applies to not just proteins, but any, ma any macromolecules um, or, or molecules for that matter in biology. All right, now going back to the four stages. So primary is the simplest, right, stage in which proteins are merely depicted in as a chain of amino acids. So just straight chain of amino acids. Secondary, however, um, you're going to get a little bit more complex. You're going to have these things called alpha helices. You're also going to have something called beta pleated sheets, right? So th the name helps suggest, right, the shape of, of these uh, of these parts in the secondary structure. So alpha helices and beta pleated sheets, there's also random coils like that. And these are going to be the result of hydrogen bonding between the, the, uh, the end groups, right, the amino groups and also the car carboxyl groups, the amine groups and the carboxyl groups of the amino acids. And as we get more complex, we have tertiary, which will be the, as a result of the R group interactions, right? So it'll, it'll give rise to a more complex shape uh, like this. And this is going to be the result of, as I said before, R group interactions, which could include disulfide bonds, hydrophobic interactions, uh, and, and a bunch more types of uh, bonds that I'm not going to mention, like ionic. Uh, dipole dipole and then quaternary is the most complex stage a hemoglobin is a good example in which we have multiple subunits right right from the tertiary that combine together to form a large protein complex so i want to now discuss which at which stage right at the minimum can we have a functional protein? And the answer is going to be tertiary um, because, right, going back to this theme, structure dictates function. So uh, it's at this stage, tertiary stage, where we get this very unique, distinct shape of a protein that helps to render the protein functional. And that's going to be really important when, for example, for enzymes, when we have kind of the active site bonding with the substrate. You want, right, a specific shape or else the substrate and the enzyme uh, are not going to form together. So tertiary is going to be the minimums, right, level in which the protein is functional, quaternary, obviously, as well. 